That is so typical. All right, we're well. recording. Thank you, Athena. Um, I'm going to call, seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call this meeting of governance organization legislation to order. Um, it is 1031 on April 21st. Um, Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, this meeting of GOL is being conducted by remote participation and is being recorded. I'm going to just touch base with everyone to make sure we can be heard and can hear, um, starting with Mandy Jo. Present. And with Pat. Present. And Sarah. Present. And uh, Darcy. Here. Okay, good. So everyone is present, and uh, we also have Emily taking notes, and Athena, the council clerk, is also there. We hopefully will have a chance to chat with her briefly later in the meeting. Um, I'm going to uh, put the agenda up on the screen, and um, hopefully you can see it. Uh, if I can move it. There we go. So um, my intention is to follow the agenda pretty much as it's given here. Um, we are going to start with a review of the GOL process for FinCom. We need to get some um, business settled with that. Um, so I see a hand raised. Um, Darcy. Yeah, I just would uh, request that we move the um, discussion of the OCA process up to earlier in the meeting. Um, either first or sometime in the first hour so that we can get to it for sure. Well, I hope, Darcy, I hope we'll get to it, but I kind of uh, thought hard about this agenda and um, I pretty much want to follow the order that we have here. We have a number of things we do have to get to. Um, and I'm also thinking that some of the things we'll be getting to will help inform item number six. Um, for instance, this committee, I think actually, since we have two members, uh, needs to spend a moment and just review the current process that this committee has been using and has adopted. So I would like to keep to the agenda as it is presented yeah. here. And we'll move it as quickly as we can. Um, and I'll keep an eye on the clock. Um, my intention is to get through the entire agenda, including item six. Um, we're not going to get through all of six today, I think, no matter what we do. Um, but that's my intention. Can we can agree you? to get to it in the first hour? Because uh, I will do my best, but I can't. I mean, we have a DAB uh, issue we have to settle. I do want to speak to the uh, council clerk. I want you very briefly. Item five should not take very long at all. I don't think um, item four will take long. This should only take a few moments. Um, and then we'll get to six. So uh, unless we get stuck in three, um, I think, and if that happens, Darcy, um, we can we can take a, a sort of uh, time check. But uh, I will certainly hope to get through it by, this, by the beginning of the second hour. Um, but I can't make any promises. Depends on how things go. Okay, well, we can always reorganize if we need to, right? Well, um, <laughs> all right, yes, we can. Any other thoughts on the agenda? Because I'd like to get started. Um, okay, um, let me um, stop sharing that and let me open up. So I'm going to put you over here. I want to. Um, begin with, uh, actually, let's look at the draft vacancy first, if you don't mind. Um, let me just open that. And I'd like to, um, hopefully everyone can see that. It need to be maybe a little bigger. Oh, oh too big. big. Now, let me see if I can open it up. And there we go. So um, this is what the uh, usual uh, uh, vacancy notice looks like. It was in your packet. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And my intention is to put this up fairly soon, but we'll talk about it that in a moment when we look at the process. Um, I'm assuming everyone's had a chance to look at it. I don't know if you have any questions about it. Um, uh, I don't see any hands. I just want you to see it. I'll, I'll hopefully you had a chance to look at it. And this goes up on the bulletin board and 
uh, depending on what we decide about the process, um, could go up as soon as today or tomorrow. Um, but we need to talk about the timeline and the process for a few moments. Okay. Um, again, selection of resident members is based on relevant experience, skills, and policy knowledge with some municipal and public finance. This is um, taken from our uh, selection guidance and from. Um, all right, I'm not seeing any hands. I'm going to close that. Um, put that away for the moment. And I'm going to put up the uh, timeline. And then I want to look at the process for just a few moments. So part of the reason I want to do this with you is because um, we are going to have to do something very similar with uh, DAB. And um, I have not heard back from Paul yet about the uh, deadlines, um, but here I didn't put any dates on it, but basically we published a vacancy notice. We collect the CAFs going back three years. Um, we contact everyone who has uh, either sent us a CAF or um, is in the CAF pool, which I will uh, share with you um, probably at the next meeting or the meeting after that. Um, at some point we have to determine sufficiency of pool um, we have to review our selection guidance. We already have existing selection guidance, but we will review it, make sure that committee is happy with it. Um, we will then solicit SOIs from the candidates. Um, and there's a deadline they must meet. Usually they're given a week. Um, it can be given two weeks at the most to complete it. Um, we need to post their names and the SOIs um, publicly at least one week before um, we uh, deliberate. Um, and then we have to set for, uh, time for interviews, and we'll talk about that. Um, and then once we, uh, and again, we'll talk about whether we, in the past, we have done interviews and the vote at the same meeting. Um, that's not the policy um, that all committees follow. And then uh, we notify the candidates afterwards, and we notify everyone um, who was interviewed uh, what, uh, what the outcome was. And these are some dates. Um, we have to have this uh, to the council. Uh, well, we could be as late as June 28th, but I don't see no reason to go that late um, because the, the, um, um, the, the end of the term is June 30. So hopefully we'll have it done much earlier, um, but that's going to depend on the process. And so, um, but this is the basic timeline. Any questions about this or concerns about this? Okay, I don't see any hands. If, 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 yeah, Mandy, go ahead. I just want to say I recommend getting the vacancy notice published as soon as possible because it has to be 14 days on the bulletin board before we can determine the su sufficiency of the applicant pool. All right. So that's an automatic two week wait time. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stop sharing this. And again, it's available if we need to look at it. Darcy has her hand up. Too. Oh, sorry, Darcy, go ahead. Uh, that's all right. I would uh, to take it off. I just am, uh, I have a practical question. Right. Um, how how many vacancies will there be? And um... we just have one. There is one position that is it's an impending vacancy. Um, the uh, individual um, is uh, has served for two years and is up. Uh, for renewal or for uh, reappointment if uh, they apply. So we have one vacancy um, okay. or impending vacancy. Um, and well, I have been told, I'm sorry? I'm sorry. The terms are always two years. They're all two years, yes. Right. And they're staggered um, in the two year terms. And I have reached out to the chair to inquire um, as to whether the current uh, member is interested in reappointment. And the answer I was given was yes, um, uh, but I've not received a, uh, a formal notice of, uh, of interest. But, Which um, one is it? I'm sorry? Who is the uh, person who- It's uh, Hegner. Thank Bob you. Bob Hegner. Um, he is the, his position is, uh, will be up for, um, uh, to be filled. And as I said, he has informally through the chair, not to me directly expressed an interest in reappointment or in reapplying. Okay. All right, I'm gonna put that over there and I wanna look for a moment. I wanna go with through you quickly, but I want you to see and uh, uh, 
comment on if you have any comments about the um, process. So again, bear with me for a second while I um, find us. You seem to have disappeared. Okay. I'm sorry. All right, share screen. Okay. So this is the official policy adopted back in June of 2020. We have used it uh, in the past. Um, vacancy, um, pretty straightforward. I think most of you have seen this. Community activity forms uh, go back three years. Um, and uh, we were treated as uh, personnel records are not shared or distributed. Um, the CAFs are not shared or distributed um, by counselors. Um, sufficiency of the applicant pool. Um, so I think it's pretty straightforward, number of applicants relative to number of vacancies, again, um, we seek diversity insofar as that is possible given the applicant pool. Uh, we encourage uh, our colleagues and anyone to reach out to the community and encourage people to apply. Um, we assess the pool holistically in the context of needs and history of the committee. Um, we do declare, as I've said, the, the pool sufficient to proceed. Um, if that's something we have to do. Um, we do not disclose the total number of applicants to the public or George, to the press. Yep. Why? I, I've noticed that in everything, and I'm I'm curious about why don't we let the public know how many applicants there are for something? Um, I'm curiosity only here, not a. I guess I don't know. It, it's uh, Evan is someone who pushed for this very hard. Um, and uh, I probably would have to, I'm um, trying to reconstruct his argument. It seemed convincing at the time. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, people have any thoughts on this one way or the other? Um, it seems to be, you know, Mandy? Yeah, I, I was trying to think the same thing, Pat. Um, and <laughs> I wonder if some of it's a holdover from the prior process where the interviews were done in private um, the very first OCA process um, versus the second one. I, I don't know that for a fact. Um, the second one, at some point, the number of applicants is actually disclosed because the interview, the ones who go to interview and who submit statement of interest, that number is clear because all of that shows up on a um, on an agenda. And mm -hmm. so the question becomes, if you've chosen not to finish the process, do we disclose how many essentially submitted a CAF and then said, I don't want included, I think becomes the question. And I guess I fall on if people have withdrawn themselves, then, then maybe we don't disclose that. Yeah, I guess the argument partly is that, um, I'm sorry, uh, Sarah. So I think one of the reasons why was um, trying to make sure that you could recruit people. And the idea was, is that if you um, maybe don't have a lot of formal training or if you are a minority, um, if, if you were thinking about applying and you knew ahead of time that there was one space and you knew that the 15 people had applied, you might just think, eh. Um, the other was um, if the names were released ahead of time, two things could happen. One is the same thing um, is if you were not someone who was really well known or you're a minority or whatever, and you see John Q popular with the PhD has already applied, you might think, well, I don't have a snowball's chance in Hades and I'm not going to apply. Um, the other was, was that if the names were um, public, to begin with, then there's a chance that people could be sort of uh, tried in a court of the public um, ahead of time. So for maybe two or three weeks before the interviews actually happened with us, then bloggers and newspapers and um, so social media. Like, could, hmm? That feels like a different issue to me, the privacy issue. That feels, 
but I'm, I'm just understand. saying what I'm just talking I'm, literally yeah. about why can't we say seven people applied, two people applied. Not yeah, I'm applied. not so, arguing yeah. for it. I'm just saying what I'm not yeah. yeah. Sarah, you know. thank you. That that is exactly the point that was made that um, I think Evan was actually referring to his own experience where you know he was a newbie and uh, if he had known ahead of time he might have been intimidated. So I think that is one of the reasons that was compelling, yeah. at least at one okay. point, was that it might discourage people who otherwise are thinking of applying if they see that the number is you know, X, Y, or Z. Um, okay. On the other hand, you could argue that you know, if you see the numbers one or two, you might think, oh, well, you know, maybe I should give it a shot. So we, I think the idea was just leave it open and try to encourage people to apply and to use our own resources uh, to encourage people to apply. But giving out the number in advance, and it changes. I think the other point was that it changes. Um, you know, Today it may be three, tomorrow it may be two, somebody may withdraw, and then it might be five. Um, and so it doesn't really give an accurate idea. Um, and then once we actually go to interviews, the number is public, um, the names are public. Um, it's, it's, at that point, it's, it's, uh, it's a public process. That's helpful, Dar yeah, thank Darcy. You, both of you, thank you. Yeah, I don't want to take up too much time with this because we did spend a lot of time at it, on it in OCA. And, um, you know, it's just a choice on the part of Amherst that, um, you know, at, at the end of our, our CAF form, there's a little checkoff box. And if we chose to um, have people, uh, or we could put a checkoff uh, box, if we chose to put that there uh, where people could allow us to share their information then it would be it wouldn't be a person uh, it wouldn't be a personnel record it would be public and um so that's what that's what northampton does they their their process is completely open and if you want to look at a person's you know the public can look at people's cafs and they know exactly how many people applied etc cetera, etc cetera. so the, i argued that we should have that that standard. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, okay. Okay. This policy is obviously not written in stone. It can be changed by the committee at any time. Um, but this is the policy we've been following up to date. That's why I want to go through it with you. Um, so if someone wishes to change something, they, they simply need to uh, make a motion to that effect. Um, and we can discuss it and then decide. Selection guidance. Um, I wanted to highlight this today because um, as we will see, um, when we're talking about uh, a general policy for the council, each uh, body has its own unique criteria. And so um, in this case, since we're talking about finance, um, we have uh, a number of specific criteria that we apply to this body. Um, so we are um, st uh, uh, statedly, we're looking for uh, applicants who have some experience serving on public finance or audit committee or training or expertise in economics, finance or policy, or et cetera. Um, experience or interest in municipal finance consistently available for meetings. This was added by the chair. I thought it was a good addition um, because of the scheduling of this particular committee. Uh, it really get, hits overdrive in the months of May and June. And so it's important that any applicant understand that if they are going to be a member of this body, their May and their June is going to be very full. Um, so um, we felt that these uh, four uh, uh, criteria were um, suitable for this committee and obviously would not be appropriate for other committees. Um, so in addition, um, as you see, uh, we, we look for a mix of experience, skills and perspectives, um, including knowledge beyond Amherst particularly in, the, in this area of finance and, and so forth. Um, in addition, the chair uh, or the designee shall solicit from the chair of finance input as to whether there's any prefer preferred knowledge or expertise that the committee requires to better assist it in its work. So normally the chair or their designee would reach out to the chair of finance. I think the last time we did this, the chair of finance served on this committee. So that was not difficult to do, but at this point, and it's not difficult to do anyway, but. Um, this uses the term term limits, which perhaps could be revised or changed to simply reappointment. Um, but um, again, generally, if a person is serving a first or second term, they are given preference for another. Conversely, if a person is completing a third term and there are other qualified applicants, preference would be given to a newcomer. 
There's no fixed limit on length of service. The length of service is normally limited to three terms, two years in length. In cases where special training or expertise is required, longer periods of service may be appropriate. Statement of interest, I think this is pretty standard. We pretty much stole it, I think, word for word from uh, CRC. And um, uh, so uh, here, I think um, there's nothing. I mean, you can look through it if you wish, or if you have a question or concern, please raise your hand. Um, but we found, and I think other committees have found that a statement of interest is an extremely valuable um, document. And so we put a lot of emphasis on this and we solicit it. And uh, if you don't complete it, um, I believe that removes you from the applicant pool. According to our selection guidance, you can miss or skip the interview, but you must submit an SOI. Okay. Interviews. All right, now things get interesting. Um, this committee uh, felt that um, interviewing everyone together was not uh, what they preferred. That could change, I understand. But we interviewed uh, all the candidates uh, sequentially, one after the other. They were welcome to stay if they wished, um, but um, they were not all present in, in the uh, chat room at the same time. Um, we interviewed each one. And uh, when we were done, um, we then uh, proceeded to deliberation. Again, that doesn't have to be the policy, but that's what we did. Um, we did not have questions uh, submitted in advance. Um, we did, at that point, we actually did have the chair of finance serving on the committee, so we didn't have to, but normally we would invite the chair of finance, I believe we invite them to attend. Um, and um, we did not have written questions in advance. Each counselor or each member of the committee, excuse me, was given one question and a follow-up. So we took a very different approach than was taken um, in the uh, OCA uh, interview process. Um, I personally felt uh, the other committee members who were uh, present can speak for themselves, that I found this to be a very effective and much more humane process um, rather than everybody in the room and each person answering the question sequentially. Um, we could have a more, uh, I think, real conversation back and forth um, and committee members could ask whatever question they wished and they could ask a follow-up. And the chair was pretty lenient. Um, but generally, uh, and the interviews took about 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes max. And we tried, um, we had one interviewee who was just very chatty. And so that's always a challenge. Uh, you wanna be rude, but on the other hand, um, we're trying to keep interviews uh, within some kind of time frame, just to be fair to everybody else and fair to the committee. Failure to attend an interview is not a reason for disqualification according to our uh, guidance. Um, if you do not wish to be interviewed or for some reason can't make the time, um, though we would certainly arrange to, for another time if we possibly could. Um, so that is not a reason for disqualification. We also did the interviews during a regular scheduled meeting. We did not establish a special meeting. Again, that could be changed, but we found it uh, worked perfectly reasonably to uh, ask people to be present um, at a regular scheduled meeting of GOL. Um, if there was a problem, we, I'm sure we would have made it some kind of arrangement or adjustment. In fact, we were planning to do so if we had to, um, but we did not initially at least have that issue. Um, so we did not declare a special meeting. Okay, and then the recommendation um, is just pretty much boilerplate. Okay, so any thoughts about that process? Again, I know this, this is also in the context of some larger questions that we're thinking about as a council and we'll come to later this, this morning. Sarah, your hand, go ahead. So this doesn't need further discussion right now, but I guess I just wanna say the things that I usually say, which is um, obviously um, I prefer that all of the, I, I think interviews, if you're gonna have them, should be for everyone, just like I feel like any other part of the um, appointment process materials are uh, important. If there's SOIs, SOIs should be for everyone. Um, I think that they should, all of the interviews should be together at the same time for the fact that you want to have people have a uh, equal opportunity or a shot at getting this position. And as I've said before, you could have, you could be a person who has an interview uh, early in the morning. It could be in the summer, air conditioning's working, things are quiet. Um, 
again, this is when we're in session, right? Because Zoom makes it different. Um, or it could be that the you know everybody's uh, internet connection is fabulous and everybody's really awake, um, and you have just perfect time for your interview and you're right on the money. Somebody else could be during a stormy day, the internet's bad, it's a hot day, they have no air conditioning and someone keeps coming in and out of the room and disrupting them. Um, so I think that all of the interviews need to be done at the same time, just so there's a level um, playing field. Uh, I, I object to the chair being at the um, interviews. I think the chair the chair is given an opportunity to say what they feel like they want. Um, so they've had a say in it. Um, usually, I mean, I would think that we send handouts like we did with the OCA process that has a lot of information about the committee there. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's fair to have someone who's basically gonna be your boss um, in this setting to be at the interviews. I. I um, I disagree with that. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else that I think is. <laughs> um, so just the same stuff that I usually say. Well, it, thank you. So interviews should not be optional. You want all the interviewees to be present together at the same meeting and interviewed um, basically as it was done with planning board or uh, originally by OCA. Um, a mass interview, basically. And um, you do not want the chair of finance present. All right. Uh, Mandy. Yeah, um, I just want to give a little background. I think one of the reasons we said they didn't have to be mandatory, there were a couple, one of which is they're non-voting members. Um, so we, we took the non-voting membership and the difference that that might have compared to a CR, to a planning board or a ZBA membership into account when we were setting this. But the other one was we decided to do them during a regular GOL meeting, um, which we recognize is a time that not everyone can actually make. It's not the time that finance meets. Um, and so I think part of the non-requirement was to take that into consideration is when that, that we did not say we were going to hold a special meeting at a different time and all of that, that, that all the other processes do say. Um, that's not to say it's good or bad, but that's a little bit of the history as to why um, that portion of this interview process was put in. Yeah, I... I was on the last uh, interviewing and uh, I remember that uh, after Matt Holloway's interview, he stayed on. And actually that made me uncomfortable. Um, and I ended up, he ended up contacting me afterwards and we had some good conversations and everything uh, because he wanted to flesh out some of his response to one of my questions. But I feel like uh, all the interviews should happen at the same time. Um, and the people should be seeing each other. Uh, I think because that felt to me, um, I don't, it seemed like unfair that he got to see, I mean, it was his choice, I understand that, to stay on and therefore he got to see who he was competing with, but the other people didn't. Um, so I, and, so I would like to see them happen simultaneously and all of them respond to the same question, but I would like there to be room for individual follow-up questions um, if you wanted to get clarification or something from one of the uh, applicants. Um, that you would like the questions to be known in advance? Not by the candidate, but by us. So we would have to decide what the questions were going to be in advance amongst each other, and only those questions could be asked. Yes, with some kind of flexibility around a follow-up. So if I were interviewing you and Sarah and Darcy, uh, and I was confused by something, I might be able, I could ask uh, clarification of Sarah or something like that. Could you ask, could you help me understand why you think 
the questions need to be decided on in advance. I guess it's the idea that everyone's answering basically the same question. So apples to apples, that kind of thing. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I think when you're okay. in a situation where we kind of did ask the same questions, but there were changes based on what information we had received through the SOIs and things, uh, which we read anyway. Um, right, so the know. SOIs, uh, right, yeah. So I just rem because yeah. I'm just thinking, you read an SOI, you might think I want to ask something specific about your SOI, but th that has to be determined according to the, what you're proposing. I have to determine that question in advance and have everybody agree to it, as opposed to okay, I've read your SOI, Smith, and you say X, and I just wanted to ask you about that. Um, you would you're okay with that, but it would have to be cleared by the whole committee um, in advance. Um, as opposed to simply at the I have meeting. I think about that. I have yeah, to okay. Think. All right. And I and I'm wondering if what yeah. I what I would play with in my mind is uh, the same kind of interview where we had with individual people, but happening simultaneously because basically the questions did say stay the same. There weren't a lot of deviation, but with some flexibility for that. I, I don't know. I'll play with it in my okay. head. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, uh, Sarah. And then Mandy. Sarah? I think that actually Mandy might have had her hand up before me if she wants to go first. All right. Well, I, I didn't, um, it's either one, whatever. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I would just respond with um, if we decide them in advance at a meeting, I, you know, and the, these are the questions that will be asked, then I think we need to distribute them to the candidates. Um, knowing that that is always not as fruitful of an interview as right. asking them without preparation, seeing how both have worked. But um, if they're decided in an open meeting, then only the, you know, without distributing, then only those candidates that know to look at that meeting, you know, you, you could give some potential um, advantage to those that are in the know versus those that are not, if you don't then distribute them. Um, I, I think I am for a, not deciding the questions. I have liked that each of us has been able to, in the past, come in with our questions based on the SOI. Um, but maybe we go with, you know, I think I'd be open to um, each committee member asks the same question of all the candidates, maybe, but not run it by the committee beforehand and do all of that prep. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Yeah. helps if you unmute yourself. So I, I realize that it may seem problematic to have questions done ahead of time and distributed to candidates. Um, and I understand that, you know, some people might want follow up just because they think I'm just looking for more clarity, you know, I'm looking for something in a candidate, and I'm simply looking for more clarity. I think I see the potential. So if I see the potential to be able to ask questions that um, could lead a candidate to uh, revealing certain, I'm gonna say biases, cause I'm not sure how else I can say it um, in their interview. Um, it might not matter so much as a non-voting member of um, finance committee, but I think all of us have explored the fact, you know, that it's possible, you know, some counselors more than others or everybody at the same time, because we're all human, right? That we might be trying to further, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna use agenda, but I don't mean it in a negative way. They were trying to, to further a bigger idea or the things that we would like to have happen. And I'm not making any judgment on that because I think as human beings even, not just, you know, elected officials, that's natural. Um, but I have seen, um, in my experience that when you talk about questions with counselors ahead of time, that there is, um, there is a temptation for some counselors to want to ask um, very pointed questions and uh, pointed follow-up questions um, about hot topic things, right? So say um, you wanted to build an alien ship uh, in the middle of the common um, and you might ask someone like, hey, you know, some questions about how do you feel about alien ships? You know, I just, I, I, 
I just, you know, I think it's just a normal tendency, right? But I think that there's a, a danger there. So I, I see what people are saying about they want authenticity because somebody could just, you know, cheat off somebody else's answer or give an answer they think is the right one. But I'm, I'm leery about that. So that's, that's why I would advocate to have all of the questions um, be the same. We can discuss them. And I, I would rather not have follow-up questions. Hmm. Okay, I, I want to bring this to a close um, and move on, but I will come back to this. Obviously, we will have to establish uh, our uh, guidance and our criteria for interviews at some point. We still can go ahead and do the notice. Um, we'll decide that hopefully before today is done. Um, I want to remind people of the selection guidance and this committee. This is, these are non-voting members of a finance committee that is uh, filled by five counselors and the chair is a counselor um, of that committee. So um, please keep that in mind. Um, and that we're looking for some fairly specific things. Um, and so if somebody's a, a great person and they answer questions really well and they can talk and laugh and tell great stories, but they don't have any background or experience um, related to finance whatsoever, um, that's a very serious concern. Um, so we are looking for people who have, you know, some, and we do have right now three people that that have experience, and I think this is important. So um, the other thing, uh, my thought just for consideration, um, we talk about somebody having an advantage. Imagine you're the third person or the fourth person or the third. Imagine also imagine you have seven people, right? So this question gets asked seven times, or you know, it's just uh, we've seen this in action. It's not a pretty particular site, and particularly with this committee. Um, and what we're looking for. Um, I like to see how people think on their feet. I like to see how they think um, without having heard four other people answer the question. And that's what we're, we'd have. And I really think that's a terrible way to do an interview. Um, talking about having an advantage. I mean, you all know what it's like in the council when, you know, or, you know in the recent uh, training we had, it was always nice to be the fourth or fifth or sixth person. So you could gather your thoughts and you could also see, you know, you could read the room um, and that's just human. So I really prefer to have an interview that, you know, the per it's you and the committee um, and they answer the question, whether they know it in advance or not. I, again, I'm not really keen on that, but it's them answering the question and not them answering the question after they've seen four other people answer the question. So I have real concerns about that. And I think it's worked very well the way we did it in the past. But um, so we'll come back to this. We're not gonna settle it today, but um, Pat, your hand is up. Yeah, yeah, I, ju I just want to go back a little, just very briefly to uh, that they can watch if they want to the other interviews. That's, that doesn't seem, I don't know. I mean, the third person, I guess they could come on and watch the interviews, but that part feels odd to me. It felt really weird to have him watching us. Well, I mean, we could arrange a process where the individual is brought into the room um, and can only be present during their actual interviews and then they're, they're taken out. Um, uh, Mandy? No, we can't because it's an open meeting and a public meeting. We oh, can't prevent okay. people gotcha. from watching the meeting. Okay, so, right, um, okay. So, but if you are allowed to change questions beforehand between candidates, then what they heard us ask one candidate, even if they watch that, might not be what they're actually asked. Right, right, right. I mean, again, I prefer uh, questions be basically, this is an intelligent group of people. Um, we, and that's why I like having the chair present because they bring their experience and knowledge to it as well. Um, and so anyway, this is something that's not gonna be easy to settle. Um, uh, we will settle it hopefully next time or sometime soon. I'm going to stop sharing this um, and I'm going to put this away for the moment. Um, and uh, all right. Okay. Um, DAB process, I wanna to go to item number three. Um, and I think what I wanna start with here is the draft vacancy notice. So 
I'm going to put that up on the screen. Bear with me. I need um, your advice and your counsel on this. Um, and this was an attempt by yours truly to construct something um, because we're going to need to do this quickly. Um, so let's take a look at it. You've not seen this before. I apologize. I just worked on it last night. So um, I basically used the model for finance. Um, Town Council Accepting Applications for Districting Advisory Board is the title. And that's the title we use for finance. Um, so the same. And this is section 7.4 of the Amherst Home Rule Charter. Town Council is now accepting applications for residents who wish to serve on a districting advisory board. The DAB is a multiple member body appointed by the Town Council every 10 years upon receipt of the final results of the decennial federal census. It is composed of nine voting members who must be residents of the town and three non-voting members, the town clerk, a member of the board of registrars and a member of IT staff. At least one of the voting members must come from each of the existing five districts and no more than two from any existing district. The term of service is one year. So this is essentially taken from the charge sheet. This is um, also basically taken from the charge sheet. The purpose of DAB is to review the existing voting districts and propose changes, if necessary, to such districts to ensure the uniformity and number of inhabitants and conformity with state and federal law. And uh, Mandy, go ahead. Yeah, um, they also have to conform with our charter, which is local law. So I don't know whether we wanna add with local, state and federal law. So um, they're in conformity with local, state, and federal law? Yeah. OK. Let me um, do something here. This is OK. okay. Thank you. Ah, uh, Sarah. So um, I've been reading <laughs> MGL, uh, the section 54. And um, so even when we use wards or districts, um, there still are precincts that have to be drawn up. So I'm just wondering, and I realize that, you know, it might not be, be so much for, you know, how we do things locally, but still I'm wondering um, if precincts aren't still useful in some way. And I realize they may change, right? As redistricting is done, those precincts may change. Um, but I'm, I guess I'm wondering if we still shouldn't use precincts in some way either to, um, I don't know, make it clear that they're still part of uh, determining polling places and or if they're still important as far as trying to draw people from precincts. Well, my feeling is that this comes from the charge sheet and I'm not, um, and I don't think precincts are mentioned there. I may be wrong, but if they are, then I guess that we could use that language, but I think the language is the districts. Mandy? Yeah, so, so the precincts get, Voting precincts, and, and I think that's what we have to turn our memory to and our minds to referring to them as. They're not precincts in the sense of town meeting precincts, they are voting precincts, and they are only drawn after the districts are divided. So they're not determined before those five districts are divided, are, are determined, and they don't have any say, you know, they don't have any influence in the division into five districts. What they have is once those districts are decided under state law, if those districts have more than 4,000 people in them, um, they need divided into voting precincts. But the voting precinct is really just for a polling location and to shorten lines. It's not, uh, it's not um, determinative of a representative. Like and, is it, and are they drawn, Mandy, by the DAB or are they drawn by the town? They're, they're drawn by the DAB, but they're only drawn after the districts are. And, and unlike, in town meeting where there were 10 precincts and each precinct got representatives on the legislative body right. in our 
now city form of government, only the districts get representatives in the legislative body. There is no guarantee that if this district is divided into three voting precincts, and frankly, it could be divided at some point into three voting precincts, that the two district councilors have to come from separate voting precincts. They don't. So it really is a district-based right. voting system. Right. And the only reason you're splitting that up is to shorten voting lines. So I don't think that, Sarah, this would be appropriate in this document, that they will be dealing with it, but in a very different way than they're dealing with districts and they'll sort that out and that's gonna be their headache. But here we're just trying to inform people as to um, their task in terms of uh, um, creating districts that are of generally equal population, et cetera. Um, Pat? Yeah, I can, I'm fine with not including precincts uh, in this. Um, I am not comfortable with the notion that um, a precinct does in it, within a district doesn't get a representative. Um, my, maybe because my district is the whole east, almost the whole eastern half of Amherst and the range of, um, it would be a hell of a shame if both counselors came from a, uh, Flat Hills Road and didn't come from, somebody didn't come from Strong Street or, um, so I'm, I'm really, and that's a, a discussion for uh, a later time, but I think that there is, it's problematic to say that if there are, we'll stick with our five districts, there are 10 precincts for voting. And I really feel like that we should continue to have representatives by precinct within a district. Andy. So we don't on the council. George and Dorothy are in the same voting precinct. I know. And that look at the problems we get out of that. I know, exactly. We're not electing by precinct. Example. We are electing by district yeah. now. It's a yeah. different form of government. It's what the Charter Commission proposed, and it's what the people of this town adopted. And I think I it, understand it, that, but I'm just saying what my preference is. Right. Well, I hear you, Pat, and I and I, I think it. And we can change the charter someday. Exactly. <laughs> we, that's for the change the charter of, uh, of meeting. But here again, just reach the time. Um, people are okay with this as it's written because yeah. um, I was then going to have a link. I'm not able to do that yet. Um, because the charge has still not been reviewed by the, the legal person and the town clerk is on vacation. So it's just life, right? Um, so if, if I had that, I, but anyway, I was going to put a link to the committee charge here. So if someone wanted to see it, they could. But I don't have any other link that I think I want to. Oh, uh, yeah, I have Pat, one more thing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and this says that the multiple member body of, is appointed uh, upon receipt of the final results of the census. We have to appoint them particularly this time in advance, don't we? I don't, that seems a little uh, Well, the, the upon here is supposed to go with every 10 years. In other words, uh, but yeah. So every 10 was, years upon receipt of the final results. So if you don't sense. have the final results, you can't appoint anybody. That's correct, you can't. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense since the committee okay. has before, before, right, right, yeah. right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So that's a good. So can we reword this? A multiple member body appointed by town council every ten years. Um, to 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 something the uh, the. Uh, yeah, we I just say in anticipation of. In that, anticipation, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So in anticipation of the final results. Yeah. In, in anticipation of receipt, receiving. Of of receiving. So we could just that, say as a multiple member body appointed by the town council, get rid of the every 10 years, which came from the charter um, and just say in anticipation of receiving the final results of the decennial census. Aha, uh -huh, we're changing the charter, Maddie. <laughs> I mean, I, I, why are you taking out every 10 years? Because I do want people to understand, and this is fine, but I just want to understand this is a, a very unusual body that only is, you know, something we take, uh, we deal with, or the council deals with every 10 years. Yeah, but so, my mind says that for this advertisement, we get rid of the every 10 years. Okay, okay. It stays in the charge. Right, okay, all right, fair enough. All right, 
Any further uh, hand? I see Sarah. I guess I'm just wondering, is there, so um, is it state law that we do it after? And if so, should we not change that language or should we make it clear that this is a one-off, but the, the, the regular language stays? I'm just curious. So the charter says every 10 years, comma, upon receipt of the final results of the decennial federal census, comma, the town council shall appoint a district advisory board composed of blah, blah, blah. So that doesn't mean, I mean, we could leave it that way. What that means is we set the appointment date as the date we receive the final census numbers if we're concerned about that. That doesn't mean we can't go through the process beforehand because we set an effective date for appointment. I mean, they have work to do. Yeah, no, we definitely need to get this started. Um, and we're going to get to it in a moment, um, is the issue of interviews. Imagine nine people, and we're hoping to have a, a, a sizable number of applicants. Are we going to interview? I mean, we'll come to this in a moment. We're going to interview all 30, 40 people. Um, so give that some thought. Um, it's not going to be nine people. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of people, um, I would hope. And we would choose... Um, so uh, maybe we will, um, but right now I just need to get the word out. And um, so I think this is, uh, if there's a problem with the wording in terms of just misleading or confusing the public. Um, we don't, don't want to misstate the facts, but we do need to get this out. This is something I would like to get out as soon as we possible. We could go back to the wording that was there because it, tracks the charter, but you know, we could add a sentence that says we're starting the process in anticipation of receiving them so that the effective date of the appointments will be, you know, we, we could do something like that. I think this is fine. The yeah. charter, the charge is the charge. Yeah, we, we're not going to know the effective date. Um, and as I said, I still don't even have the charge yet. So I can't put this up unless we want to take this out. We could just remove this um, for more information on the DAB. Um, we could just remove it. Um, but at the moment, with, if we have it in, I can't put it up because I don't have the charge officially um, okayed, and maybe we should wait for that. I think before we put any kind of public notice up, we should make sure the, the state is happy with what we've done. Um, so I, I would leave the language as it is, but I'm... Um, and then the rest is just... Uh, see, now, here's another issue. The CAF is actually... Um, this is the link to the town council CAF as it exists at the moment. It does not include this body. Um, we could change that or we could just say the hell with it and just, you know, as long as they fill out a CAF, but I think they have to click off DAB. So we're gonna have to change it. Mandy? Yeah, I think you just talk to whoever man maintains the form and say, please add a DAB right. checkbox. Box, check off, yeah, okay. I think that's right. And would that be, I don't know if uh, Athena's paying attention at this point, but would that be, would that be Brianna? I am here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Athena, would that be Brianna? Who would, who would, I, who would I talk for a DAB box? Yes, Brianna, Brianna. can help okay. with that. Okay, I will do that, thank you. Uh, and then I'm telling people to reach out to me um, if they have questions so I can confuse them. Um, and then uh, town council appointments uh, in accordance with the, yeah, this is just boilerplate taken from the finance uh, charge. So it's not 2.6E, it's 7.4. So accordance with seven, so 2.6E refers to finance, is that right? What is 2.6E? I don't even have a, yeah. Um, I think that's it's generic. determining its own standing or ad hoc committees. It's, it's not relevant at all. So For this one council, is 7.4. Okay, cottage section 7.4. Which of all right. And we are fulfilling the town board requirement 912E. Is that true? Yep. All right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then this is just a link to the the, the, the uh, charter. Right. So if they actually want to read 7.4 or 912E, they can. All right. So um, I'm going to, by consensus, this is acceptable. It will not go up until we get the charge reviewed. 
And it sounds like you think a link to the charge would be appropriate. So I would um, create that. Then I would send this to, uh, um, uh, to Athena, I guess, and have it uh, posted publicly. And this has to be up for at least 14 days before we can begin any kind of uh, interview process. So, all right. All right. Very quickly, I want to go look at, I don't know, yeah. Right, let's just look at this quickly. I'm not worried so much about the dates on this. I'm not actually worried about the dates on this, but I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page as to the process and where we are right now. So we have created a draft charge. We have, have sent it out for legal review. Everyone can see this, correct? Um, we are trying today to create a process and timeline for recruiting, interviewing, and recommending appointments to DAB. We made a little progress today, but not a lot. That's today. Um, I don't think we'll be able to report to the council with any completed anything by May 3rd, but that was what I was dreaming. I still have not gotten back information from Paul or the town clerk as to um, these these dates. Um, I believe uh, someone had communicated to um, a member of this committee or maybe to Athena uh, another date like September 8th. Um, I'm not sure where that number came that date came from. So there's some confusion still about these dates. Um, but the basic just give this some thought and, and we'll come back to it. Eventually, I will post a public notice that we just reviewed and solicit, ask people to submit CAFs. There will be a checkbox for the DAB at some point. Uh, and obviously, I think we'd be urging our colleagues and everyone we know to encourage people to consider applying um, because we're going to need a broad representation amongst the five districts. At some point, uh, we will need at least nine, <laughs> probably a lot more than nine, uh, members of the pool. And our normal process would be to declare the pool sufficient. And then a really difficult question, at least in my mind, do we really want to interview these people or do we want to simply rely on SOIs? Um, if we do interviews and we're talking 30, 40 people, um, we will have to have special meetings. I don't think we could do them all at one meeting. I do not think it would make sense to interview 40 people at once. Um, there's a whole host of questions that we're gonna to have to wrestle with. We're not gonna do that today, but I, people need to start thinking about it, um, how we're gonna manage this just as a process. Because um, I think given what this body is asking, we're going to need a number of, uh, lots of applicants just to get two from each district or at least one from five and then no more than two. Um, any quick thoughts on interviews? Do you really think that you wanna interview? Uh, 50 people? And if you do, how do you manage, want to manage that? I just, have a, I just have a quick question, which may be a dumb one. Um, what, what, what's the legal authority for our having jurisdiction over the interviews and the appointment process for this? You mean GOL? Yeah. I think it was just referred to us. I mean, I'd be happy to give it to CRC or to a TSO or to uh, any, anybody you'd like, but it was sent to us as governance organization legislation. It seemed like an appropriate um, task for GOL, and I believe referred to us by the council. Right, but re what was referred to us? Uh, the, the job or the, I mean, I, I guess I've just never seen anywhere the authority for I mean, we have the authority for appointing the finance committee, right. non-voting residents. Right. I just am not question. sure where it is, you know? Question. Mandy? So what was referred to GOL was to recommend a charge and a process for recommending appointments. So that process could include which committee would go through the process. Um, I yeah, think the board is operating under the assumption that it will be GOL based on GOL's current charge. Um, obviously, the, the notice 
the public notice would change depending on whether when the council adopts the charge, whether they change what, who they designate to be the recommending body. Um, and I just want to correct Darcy, uh, GOL does not appoint finance committee resident members. We recommend to the council. Right. To appoint. Right. Is, and that's in our charge, right? So do we need to change? For finance it is. For we need to change our charge and have the council adopt the amendment, right? To allow us, why? Well, we certainly can take this up as a referral within the general context of, of, of what GOL does. Um, but if we are actually officially appointed to do this to do this process, that's a fair question, I guess, um, whether that then has to be added to our charge. Um, but at the moment, as Manny points out, it's not clear who's going to do, you know, we're going to recommend someone to do this process, but the council will decide who it's going to be. And we'll probably recommend GOL. And if we do that, we probably would recommend ad adjusting our charge but that's down the road. Right now we do have the job and it's a very difficult, a challenging one of coming up with a process and a charge. I think we've got the charge now, but we need a process. And um, part of that is gonna be what we're gonna recommend about interviews. Whoever has to do this, um, do you wanna recommend that they interview everybody in person? Do you wanna recommend that they interview everybody all at once? Do you wanna recommend that there be questions decided on in advance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if the answer is yes, fine, we'll send that to the council. Sarah. So I'm just thinking that this can't be the first time that, uh, you know, I, mean, I realize that, that this has been done and I realize it's all different forms of government, right? You need mayors and city councils and um, select boards, but we probably could look a little bit at how other things are done. It might give us some guidance. Doesn't mean we have to do it that way, but I mean, I, do we have time for all of us to kind of look at where it's been done other places and where how it was done here and see if we can find sort of a streamlined process? Would that be helpful? Uh, given all the other things we have to do, I'm not sure that, that um, I think it certainly would be interesting to, to find out how it was done 10 years ago. And yeah. I think Arlene Terizzi might be some person I could reach out to, certainly Alyssa um, and Andy would have some insights. Um, uh, perhaps the, Sue Adet was perhaps around 10 years ago. I believe she was. She's been here at least, I think, 14 years, I believe. So between Sue, two members of our uh, council, and maybe a member of the League of Women Voters, I could uh, just do, you know, reach out and say, can you talk, tell us a little bit about what the process was 10 years ago. Um, but there's only some, we, we really have time pressures here. No, um, I totally agree. I was just thinking that maybe no, that's a good idea. They yeah. might be like, oh, we did this. And then GOL will be like, oh, so much easier. Or, you know, it might just give us sort of an well, idea. Sarah, think out loud. I mean, let's say we, we forego interviews. Let's say we just look at, you know, we literally look at whether they, where they live and, you know, just, uh, and are we going to ask them for an SOI? Um, and it's an open question. That do, I mean, we found those to be useful just to get a measure of somebody. Um, we could just rely on SOIs and rely on their address and, and you know, and uh, assume, whether this committee does it or some other committee, I think we have to give them some sort of direction as to what we think is the procedure or process to follow. Um, and that's it's hard for me to think of right away because, I, I mean, I if, if we don't, if we, I mean, I understand what you're saying about the headache of interviews. Um, I can see using SOIs, but at the same, if it's, if we don't use any criteria, we might as well just put all of their names in a hat for each district, shake it up and have one of us pull it out, I guess is what right. I'm thinking. No, right. That is a process we could recommend. Yeah. <laughs> it would make things in some ways easier and maybe it's as good as any, but that's uh, Mandy, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe what we can do since we're gonna be running short on time today is for next meeting, assign everyone the job of coming up with their own thoughts on interviews and SOIs, um, most of the rest of the process, and even selection guidance, most of the rest, rest of the process um, for each committee that has adopted processes regarding recommendations is nearly identical. It's those three sections that tend to be different. Um, the SOI section is actually not very different at all, I don't think, between yeah. the two committees yeah. that do it now. It's, yeah. it's selection guidance and it's interviews. 
Um, and so if each of us comes to the next meeting with our thoughts on that and potential writing in, in writing of proposals, we, we can then actually have a fruitful discussion as to where we all are. Okay. I think that, that makes good sense. And again, there is time pressure here. So we really do need to put our minds to this collectively. Um, okay. Any other? So again, this is in the packet. Um, and don't worry about the dates. They just, right. But it does give us a sense of the time pressures and that this is something we need to move on quickly, um, but probably not by May 3rd. All right, um, very quickly, I would like to um, bring in, um, hang on for a second, acclimation calendar. I just want to look at this very quickly. An hour here. mark, by the way. I, yes, thank you, Darcy. I, I see that and I will try to make this move very quickly. Um, I want to look just for a moment at the uh, let's see if I can make this a little bigger. Let's see, one hundred percent. Let's try one hundred twenty-five percent. Whoop! That was bigger, all right. Okay, so yeah, this is not very easy to read, is it? Um, I just want to show this to you and ask you to look at it, unless people have some comments specifically. Now, again, I, I know you've got a lot on your plates, but um, if I, I'm still looking for sponsors for some of these, um, for instance, a lot of the answer might be um, uh, to the uh, the CPA officer. I don't know. Um, so um, it could be Jen. It could be a particular body. But what I'm trying to do is create um, a calendar that gives when the uh, proclamation, um, the date. So Black History Month is all month. MLK Day, obviously, is a specific day in January. Um, Chinese New Year, at least this year, was 8 February. Um, when it was reviewed by GOL and who the sponsors are for future chairs of GOL, whoever they may be, that they um, will know who to reach out to. Um, and uh, so that's what I've created. And if people have a chance to look at this, either right now or at some future point, and help me fill it out. I know, again, this, uh, Jen is working on Southeast Asian Heritage Month. Um, there was some email chatter about um, where is Race Amity Day. And we have a proclamation for that. Um, but, and I have, actually I have it, held in advance because we just have so much to do. I also point out Race Amity Days in June, and this is April. So I'm, I'm holding on to that. I just don't see the rush here. Um, but uh, again, I need a sponsor. So um, that's what this that's where this is at at the moment. And hopefully in the end, we can I will fill it out and it'll be preserved for posterity. George, uh, yeah. Jen, Jen Moisten's in the attendees. Can I bring her in? Yeah, would you bring her in? Thank you. That would be great. Thank you. And Mandy, while Jen is coming in, you have a thought. Yeah, I just had a, I, I don't know whether we could add a column or um, change G to recommended date for GOL to review because, you know, to bet day on March 10th, we might not be able to review it as late as March 3rd in a normal year. So exactly. could we change that column to when the chair recommends GOL review that by in order to guarantee that it's in front of the council before March exactly. 10th, you know, exactly. things like that. Exactly. So you're right, Mandy, that really the actual date, historical date is really irrelevant. It's really uh, ideally what, by what point should this be reviewed by GOL? Yeah. I can make that change. I think that yeah. makes sense. Okay. Um, Jen, I don't know if you're in yet. Yes, I'm here. Hi, good morning. Hello, everyone. Um, Hi. This is something I will share with you um, after the meeting's over. Um, and it's a proclamations calendar, um, hopefully in some kind of form that is useful to not only us right now, but to future um, bodies like GOL in the future. Um, what I've tried to do is list the uh, proclamation, the date uh, of that particular proclamation, um, and then we're going to change this to the date by which it should be reviewed by GOL. And then finally, sponsor or sponsors. 
um, in the sense that if someone, let's say the chair of GOL, uh, just wants to check up on something in advance, they know who to reach out to. Um, this is something, Jen, we could do offline because um, I think you would be able to uh, fill this out with me um, for like MLK Day, um, Black History Month. Um, but Tibet Day right now, I have just your, Mr. Dunup. Um, maybe it all goes through, um, you know, I don't know. So we'd like to fill that out at some point. I did mention the um, Race Amity Day. I do have a draft of that proclamation, but it's the second Sunday in June. So normally I would fi figure that would be reviewed sometime in mid-May or late May mm -hmm. by us and then sent to the council. Is so, there, yeah, go ahead. Can I, can you scroll back up? So I, if I, I just wanna make sure I'm not repeating what Mandy just said. So sure. I'm thinking that there should be a s submit by date. Yeah. Okay. Submit and I don't know if that, Thank you. and I think Mandy had said the date that it has to be, which could be considered the same things. But. Exactly. So bit by date would be the date by which we would be reviewing it at that, that meeting. Yes. That's right. just helpful for Good. A, myself and other community members that don't usually um, submit proclamations. Good. Although Angela and I are always here to help folks do that. Right. Um, and I think that's all I really wanted to say about that. I didn't know when a good time was to talk about, it's not Southeast Asian Heritage Month, it's Asian American Pacific Islander Month. Okay, so it's Asian, bear with me. Mm -hmm. Asian American, American. Mm -hmm. thank you. Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Thank you. Yeah. So I probably five minutes before you went into this meeting submitted you at the very, very last minute of possible time a proclamation in which I understand that it won't make the time frame that's needed for this meeting, but right. in the hopes that you can do the first one. So the only thing that would really need to be changed are the dates and the date that I'm doing the event that's at the bottom of the proclamation. The, okay. the rest of the context could stay. And so what you submitted, Jen, is the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month Proclamation? Yes. Okay. And so the next time that we're going to be able to look at that is May 5th. Yes. Now, we do have the authority, well, we haven't practiced in the past, um, done these out of cycle, and the chair looks at them. Um, but um, normally it would be, um, so the actual... The date is, it is all month. Um, next time we would see it would be May 5th. Would that be yep. acceptable? Could you, I mean, that means, and the next council meeting is, anyone? The 17th. 17th, so halfway through the month. Right, and so I would a, yeah, do the, May, yeah, mm -hmm. we have a I May would, 3rd council meeting. <laughs> I would do the event um, the week of the 17th after it's been approved by the town council. What if we tried to put it on the May 3rd agenda and just forewent this time around the uh, formal GOL review? That would, would that be help you in any way? That would be fantastic. And then I would okay. just have the, the event on the 17th itself because I don't want to go too far into the month. I think doing it in the middle of the month is a good time. Okay, okay. So the events will still be in the middle of the month, but it would be nice to have the notice up at the beginning of the month for the entire month as we've been, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and this but, is the first one, which was right. why it was so hard to, no, I had to I'm kind saying. of, um, it's the first one that time it's ever been done, but the Juneteenth one I also submitted as well. Okay, okay, right. I now have Juneteenth and I have um, uh, Race Amity Day, but we're, we're okay with that in terms of timeline. That's yep. not an issue. What are your thoughts, colleagues, about this? Mandy? Uh, I just wanted to suggest maybe three columns a submit to GOL by, a GOL hereby, and the GOL hereby could be first meeting of May, you know, second meeting of May, you know, or May 1, May 15, or something like that. And then a council consider or council meeting heard at or something, which is first council meeting of the month and second count, you know, first meeting or second meeting of whatever month. Okay. And then you can work back from, you know, the say Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month should really be considered at the council meeting in mid the second April council meeting, which okay. would then pop to 
the first probably GOL meeting in April, which means it needs submitted by April 1, say, something like that. Okay, you like so that. you'd like a submit by date to GOL, then a, then a hearing date by GOL, and then a hearing date by, or voting date by council. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, Darcy. Yeah, I just would, I would think that it would be helpful to have a column of uh, um, most recent um, proclamation uh, that was the annual previous proclamation, a link to it so that we would have a record of okay. Okay. previous proclamations that were the same. So link to latest, latest version. Right. Right, right. No, yeah. <laughs> Um, this is well, I mean, my daughter is back from Hawaii, so maybe I can hire her to help me with this, but um, these are good suggestions, and I will work on them. Let's focus for just a moment on the Southeast, excuse me, the South, the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. It is a new proclamation. Are you comfortable with the chair um, and or maybe one other member of this committee looking at this and giving it the GOL treatment? and then sending it to, okay, I see a lot of nodding heads. Um, and so this is not a normal procedure for the public to know, um, but uh, with your permission, I will do that. And I will probably, um, if you're, it's okay with you, I will also dragoon uh, Councillor Haneke into this because she has an extremely keen eye and also has been doing this a very long time. So if the two of us mm -hmm. may look at this and then uh, make our suggested edits, uh, we'll consult with the uh, sponsor which at the moment I believe is Jen. Is there, right, good. We'll consult with her and we will ask the, the uh, council president to put it on the agenda for May 3. Um, and that's great. And I have a copy of it because Jen has just sent us one. So we will, Manny and I will get on that in advance of the meeting of May 3rd and we will do that. Okay, and I will work on this and bring you another iteration of it soon. I'm not sure how soon, but soon um, with some additional columns Jen, the final question for you, and it doesn't have to be answered right now, and maybe maybe when we talk later, um, I would like, I don't want to have to put your name down for me, <laughs> just the sponsors, right? But that may be the answer. Um, it's nice to have the actual community sponsors, if it's a human rights commission or some particular uh, community group, but um, at some point I'd like to fill this column out and um, you know, I will turn to you for advice and help on that. Yeah, if if they're not HRC, then we can just put the town manager's office. I mean, that's and that that's a, the simplest. Okay, that's a good representation. And, that's and there is, I well take there. it, there is no group associated with this. This is again coming through um, basically the town manager's office in your work as it, as as the community participation. Office. Yes. Okay. Well, which is great. I mean, dude, this is great work, Jen. It really is. Um, Thank you. We're the outreach committee, <laughs> and. We actually, part of our charge is working with you. So this is actually what we are supposed to be. Um, I take that back, actually. That's TSO, Darcy. Yeah, that we're, is. we're doing TSO's work. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, you, Jen, thank you very job. much for this. Um, anything um, else, Jen, you had to bring up or? No, I just wanted to say thank you so much um, for moving that forward. And thanks for all the hard work. And let me know if I can help with your um, Oh, I will. That's Spreadsheet. Awesome. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Jennifer because the amount of work that you have been doing um, in your regular position and also the, your work on the Community Safety Working Group and everything that you do for this town, I am blown away and I value you greatly. We are oh. very lucky. Thank very you lucky. so much. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 All right, so I'm gonna close that thing. Whoops, it's not happy. Okay, save, I'm gonna just close you. All right, um, final, very quickly, town council clerk. Um, where is the fate of proclamations? Oh, this is just a bunch of, okay. I just wanna to touch base with Athena on this, just to make sure I understand and the committee understands. Um, this was uh, Councilor Brewer's email from uh, many moons ago now. Um, Athena, when say we send you the South Asian, right, when that comes to you, 
um, from the council. Council votes it, says great. So what happens? So once the council votes it, I send it to Lynn for her signature. Right. Then, then I post it to the council webpage. There's a link on the, the main council page right. to uh, proclamation resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, and so forth. Right. So it lives in there. And then um, I do a follow-up email after every council meeting. And so our new practice has been to that I would copy Brianna on the email saying that the proclamation or resolution is signed and posted and it's ready for that news and announcement item and then Brianna takes it from there right. and does, does the announcement and includes any information about an event happening related to that. Okay. What about timeline, length of time it's up, that sort of thing, yeah. Um, I think that Brianna has probably used her judgment. I haven't right. given no, her specific instructions right. about that, right. um, but obviously she can see when the date of an event is and if it's a month long event. So I think I've just been kind of trusting that, that she's this using good judgment. Okay. But, if, but if we wanna include more specific directions about how long things should be posted or if it's you know just a one day or a week, they're all a little different. So if we wanna give more specific instructions then I can include that. And that's something I think this committee, not necessarily today, but at some point needs to wrap its mind around. Pat. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I've been thinking a lot about what happens to a proclamation after it goes through the council. So it's a little bit off from this, but it seems to me that not being able to read the full re uh, proclamation, et cetera, in the council kind of diminishes uh, it. and I was wondering whether or not in the council when we make a, a proclamation or even a resolution that we read the now therefore um, you know or, or make a, a very brief statement about um, the issue very brief and then mm -hmm. read the now therefore so I, you know um, mm -hmm. or, so I, I'm, I guess I'm basically suggesting that we add that somehow to this process. Um, okay. I mean, the now therefore on the Goodwin Memorial Church uh, is now therefore we the Amherst Town Council express our appreciation for the Goodwin Memorial AME Zion congregation and its vital roles in contributing to the diversity, history and cultural heritage, heritage blah, blah, blah. It's very, you know, it's a very short, uh, statement, but it would be, I think, uh, respectful and um, worthy of being read in the council. And would also, I mean, when we deal with sponsors at GOL and we go through the process, they're very appreciative of that. I think we've seen that a number of times. We can also say that this, and not only will it be on the agenda, but it will be at least the, the, the substance of it will be publicly acknowledged at the meeting so that if they are present, they will hear it and it's also preserved as opposed to what is the current practice, understandable for reasons of time, where essentially it's on the consent agenda and it's just, you know, it's like the minutes, it's just, you know, checked off. And that seems, I agree with Pat, that seems, I understand the pressures of time, I understand very real concerns about how long our meetings are, but this is a really important performative aspect of our job. And our, I think we need to press hard to, to have some kind of public acknowledgement um, however brief for these kinds of proclamations, if we're going to do them. Mandy. I like the idea of reading the now therefore clause. I think it's a good compromise from the whole thing, some of which can go two, three pages long um, mm -hmm. and the need for recognition. And that could always be done right after the consent agenda um, so that it's formally passed at the time it's read. I can share this with the uh, the council president, um, the GOO chair would be happy to do that um, as part of his job, um, but it could be done by, you know, for instance, Pat could volunteer or an, a counselor, a counselor sponsor, or one of the sponsors for that particular could be uh, asked or assigned to read that particular uh, passage. Um, I think that would be a nice way to do it. Um, I think right, none of us are on the agenda setting body at the moment, so I think it's just Evan um, so I guess what I would say is I'd reach out to um, 
the council president. Does she have the power just sort of by, I assume she does, to uh, to do this on her own? She doesn't need to raise it as a, uh, that's a question. I have no idea the answer. Um, I'll raise it with her and see what she says. I think it's just part of the announcements that she right, decides. Right. And okay. when she I will raise it. I will raise it with her and ask her by getting a consensus. Can I, is it fair to say a consensus of the committee would like to see something like this done? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pat would, Darcy would. Okay, good. Yeah. I, I agree. Question. I agree. I, I, I would you, say Pat. that's a good suggestion, Pat. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will carry that out with the president. All right. Thank you. Um, all right, put you away. All right, we have, and I think here we need to make some just general decisions about how we want to proceed. It is almost noon. We still have 35 minutes. We do have something we need to do under new business. I can give this about uh, 25 minutes at least. And at that point, then we decide how we want to proceed. Um, this meaning item number, um, uh, six. And we have documents in the uh, packet that have been submitted by a member of the committee. Um, and um, let's, I guess I'm going to look for advice from the, from Darcy here as to how she would like to proceed. Does she want to put up on the screen the red line version? Does she want to put up the memo? Or does she want to just speak? First. I'm sorry, the memo first. Okay. Memo first, and could we bring Kathy in? I think she's in the. Kathy is in there. the. Uh, okay, if you want to bring Kathy. She was in the attendees. I don't. I think she probably still is. Okay. Um, she contributed to the memo. She may have contributed, but it was not assigned to a group, and we as a committee haven't had a discussion yet on it. Um, so I'd be concerned about you know nothing against fellow counselor, but I'm just concerned that we'd be privileging one counselor over many if we did that. And well, since the other two of you are here, it feels like not necessary, but. So maybe you're looking for just a sort of general sense from the committee as a whole as to how we wanna proceed before we start um, going into the specifics here. I'm happy to leave. There too. Well, no, we don't like, I'm not kicking you out yet. I we think we're just trying to figure out how we want to proceed on this. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'm concerned about giving non GOL counselors, certain non GOL counselors, preference over others on discussions during GOL when this was referred to GOL. Well, this is not a quorum of the council, and any counselor could join a meeting um, if. Well, the, uh, no, but. Our counselors are treated, if we, if I go to TSO, I'm treated as a member of the public. If you bring counselor in, you're no longer treating them as a member of the public and you didn't offer that to any other counselor. And I think that's wrong. I think that they can join as, um, as a presenter, as mm -hmm. from what I recall yeah. from, from Athena, they can join as one of the presenters if they so choose. Yeah, I, just can, I, I guess my question is, this was not a, while I recognize there's a proposal from three counselors, what was referred to GOL was to develop a policy. Um, and we as a count committee haven't even talked about what that would look like. Yeah, I think, I really okay. want this committee to wrestle with this first before we, um, and just figure out what we want to do. Um, and maybe the answer may be, than to invite uh, other counselors or other people to come and make presentations. Um, what right now we have is a document um, put forward by a member of the committee for the committee's review and discussion. Um, but I also yeah. feel, I think that Kathy is one of the people who helped do this. So she is a presenter, even though, I mean, I, we don't keep other counselors out uh, you know, when they're presenting. The last time we talked about um, child abuse, Dorothy Pam was in the audience and we brought her in um, because she was one of the sponsors. Of the, of the and so I, while I hear what you're saying, Mandy Jo, and my first impulse was saying, no, Kathy, I think as a uh, one of the people who's presenting this, she should be allowed in. I don't think she should be 
able to speak unless she's called upon, but that's the normal process. Well, she certainly can, can listen in. I, I'm reluctant at this stage to have a back and forth um, until we as a committee decide what we want to do and what the heck is going on. Um, I have no problem. I mean, Kathy's welcome to, to listen in, but I, I'm really reluctant at this stage to get into you know, a, a question back and forth, a sponsorship kind of thing when we haven't even decided what we want to do. Um, this was referred to us by the council. We were given a deadline of, what was it, July? I forget, it was, is right. And this was voted on by the council. So um, I, I'm perfectly willing to try and move it ahead as quickly as we can, but we do have a lot to do. Um, this committee has, and the council has referred it to us with a very long timeline. Okay, so um, I want to first get clear on what this committee wants to do. Um, and what I got the sense last time is they wanted to take the OCA document, or excuse me, the council wanted us to take the OCA document and shape it into a broad process slash, we, first of all, we had to determine policy versus process. Because we've got both of these sort of jumbled together. But the referral as I understood it, and, and I think Kathy, right, was that we take the OCA document process and and work it and then bring it back to the council at some point and we haven't even started that yet so i'd like to start that process today using the document that um darcy has put into the uh, had, had me put in the packet but she's i think wants to start with the memo to sort of give us a sense of where where she is coming from and in this case she also has a colleague um who has been working with her on this and so where it gets a little dicey is what's her role in this. Um, and I, right now, am trying to just get the committee to wrap its mind around what's happening before we start bringing in other counselors. So that's why I did not announce this in a general sense um, to the council at large, because I wanted us to have some time ourselves to, to work on it and then open it up to anyone and his brother of my council wants to come. So that's what's complicating it here. So I'm happy to have Kathy come in. I would ask her respectfully not to speak. <laughs> Could we go to Sarah and then Darcy before, you know? Yeah. All right, Sarah. So my name is on this as well. That's right. There's, right. you know, you Darcy and I are here. Right. I find it a little bit insulting that it, right? Unless you want to hear from all three of us to just say, well, you know, Kathy should do the talking. I think this, this document is actually fairly straightforward. I don't think it would take that long to describe. There's not many changes to just describe what the document does. And then we can go from there. I mean, it, that's my feeling. Okay. Darcy? I think that we should um, just move forward. I don't agree with our not bringing Kathy in because it it's completely different from previous procedures that we followed, but I think we should just move forward. And if we could look at the memo, that would be good. All right. I believe this is the memo. Yeah. Okay. So um, basically uh, the, oops, lost you there. Wait a minute. Uh, basically, the, uh, the three counselors um, tried to follow the guidance of the town council from the meeting to look at the OCA process. So um, uh, the, the council president had recommended that we that that it was a, the goal of having a uniform policy that be followed by the council committees over time was a good idea. Um, we um, started with the OCA seven page set of procedures um, and with the goal of, um, as several counselors mentioned at the meeting, getting it back quickly to the council. So um, because it's time sensitive, if we want it to, to um, apply in the upcoming planning board and uh, other processes. So to, um, to expedite the process, we did the six, the seven items, the seven 
things that are listed in this memo that are very, very straightforward. We just changed the title uh, to town council appointment policy. Um, we inserted a um, sentences in the prologue that just state that the goal is to have a, unifor a unified policy um, used by all committees. Um, we uh, changed the wording of OCA, uh, Outreach Communications and Appointments Committee to town council or to the specific committee. Um, we kept the wording as much as possible regarding discussions with the chair of the committee uh, and with other wording. We did distinguish between the planning board ZBA um, and the uh, resident non-voting residents of the finance committee. Um, we, the one thing we did change substantively was that we inserted the so-called term limit section that we know is not term limits into the, um, into the new document in the form that it was proposed at the town council meeting. Um, and we added a paragraph in, um, in advance of it that came from the, the, uh, town, the town appointments handbook that basically gave an overview of the different qualifications that we would look for in general and that we would want to have broad representation from the community and so on. So we put that in and, we, and it also stressed that we want to have diversity among um, appointments um, in all different areas. So, um, and as far as the appendix, we, we added it in, we did not make any changes in it. We didn't edit it at all and, and thought that would just be a question of whether the town council wants to include the appendix, which, um, uh, which was in the OCA version. So um, we also, you know, took into consideration that that the GOL policy is a little different, um, and that 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 we probably are going to have disagreements within this committee about what we're going to put forward that would then have to be rehashed in the town council anyway. So the goal was to get this back to the town council as as soon as possible. So uh, that being said, um, I'd like to move to recommend the town council adopt the outreach communications and appointments process to recommend appointments to multiple member bodies appointed by the town council as amended in the policy for town council appointments dated April 18th, 2021. Sarah, did you want to add anything? Well, we have a motion. I'm sorry, that's been presented. Oh, I'm great. looking for a sorry. second. I'm sorry. That's George. all right. I'm just looking for a second. A second. So Sarah's seconding this. All right. Um, and what I understand this motion to be is um, the entire document that you've submitted, the red line document, is what you're proposing that we, um, is that correct? That yeah. you're, yes. okay. And um, I guess I'm, I mean, we haven't even discussed it yet, um, but okay, all right. So we have a motion that's been seconded. Um, I, Mandy. Yeah, I think it's highly premature to make this motion. I am mm. slightly offended that it is made at this point without even allowing GOL to discuss a policy. Um, this is something that was provided by two counselors that are on GOL, the town, but one counselor that is not. Um, GOL was referred to develop a policy. GOL hasn't even discussed the development of a policy yet. And to make a motion that will now, as it sits on this table, require so many motions to amend to just deal with even small changes to this document that we haven't even been able to discuss just adds so much work to this. Um, 
that I can't support it at this point. It's, it, for example, the title town council committee appointment policy is so unclear that it appears to just by the title apply to town council committees, not the committees, the multiple member bodies that the town council appoints for. Like it's got so many problems that aren't even substantive. To do this this way, I think is, I, I'm also sadly offended. Um, it, it does, yeah, I have to say it does seem premature. If something like this goes to the council in its current form, um, it's not gonna get anywhere anyway. So I think our task is to get it into the best shape we can, um, working the five of us with our different perspectives before we go move to a motion to, to adopt something. Um, so it does seem premature. Um, it would require from now on every single change to be an amendment uh, to this document, and that's going to take forever. Um, and at some point, so I, I would that's I do have just the concern here about the, the motion at this point, um, just creating a huge time issue, let alone um, it. Right. So um, I see both Darcy's hand, I think, was first, and then Sarah's. I thought Sarah. Oh, Darcy's hand is down. I'm sorry, Sarah. So I just want to say that um, I feel like having this is huge, right? Just an entire policy to back to GOL, especially after um, Oka spent a year and a half on it, right? Um, I feel like sending the entire OCA document, the whole policy and process was, I feel in a way to just bury this in GOL and without other counselors being able to say exactly what they want or don't want. And I think I'm, I would rather scoop out my, both of my eyeballs with a spoon than to go through this again with a small committee, have it take, I, I think it would take us five months, six months, then bring it to the entire council. And then it wouldn't just be Scribner, right? Issues, people are gonna have huge issues with it. My thought was, I, I understand, yes, that the, the title might be poop at this point, but it is the OCA document in its entirety with Scribner changes we addressed the issue that Alyssa had with the fact that it really wasn't term limits, which when you look through the document, it wasn't. Um, Andy had brought up that he wanted to have, and Steve did, and I think Mandy did too, that, they, that preference was a weird word and they wanted to make sure that there was diversity. I think that the sentences that we added, those, pretty much answered those questions. And I would really rather punt this right back to town council and at least get some honest feedback about what people want and they don't want. I, I feel like it, this was just, they sent us out with an impossible task to bury it. Let me just speak to that briefly and then I'm gonna to turn to Mandy. Um, that's why I put this on the agenda for today. Um, I set the agenda and I put it on the agenda. And I actually had prepared a document um, to get this started, but it was superseded by another document that was sent to me. And so we're starting with that document. Um, and I would just point out that there are going to be a host of issues, Sarah. It's not that simple. I have a host of issues with this. Um, and so I was hoping to get that process started today, but now we have this in front of us and it's gonna take a very long time to work through it, which is unfortunate, but um, that's where we stand. Anyway, it's on the agenda today, so no one's burying anything. Um, and uh, I was hoping to discuss it in some detail today to get a sense of where the committee wants to go and then bring it back to the next meeting and um, hopefully have it in some shape. But in the current state that it's in, it's gonna take forever to work through this. And that's actually just the nature of our work. Um, if you send this back in the condition it's in now, it's not going to get anywhere. No one's going to vote. I mean, I can't imagine any more than three people voting for this because it just needs a lot of work. Um, it's just the nature of our job. All right, who's next? Um, I've lost track of who put up next. Anybody who's, I have Mandy, I have Pat. Pat. Can go since she hasn't spoken. I'm sorry, Pat. Um, 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 I feel like I would, I can't um, support this in for right now 
Um, I need some time to look at it. I would like to see George's document. Um, and I would like to have a commitment from the chair and the committee that this gets taken up at our next meeting and becomes the predominant issue. Um, I don't feel like it's been sent to GOL to be buried, but since there's lots of things that happen that I naively ignore, um, I'll take that as a possibility and it shouldn't be ignored. We really do need a policy. Um, and I would like, so I would like us to um, have George's document, the document that the three women, the three counselors have edited, and then anything that either Mandy Joe or I want to send that we send to uh, the chair to be shared with everyone and that we bring this up at the next meeting. All right. Um, again, I don't know the order. Um, Darcy? Yeah, I think that there are, um, you know, there's a potential of taking a massive amount of time in GOL and having um, serious disagreements on a lot of stuff that are in the that is in the policy, and then uh, coming up with a version that we send to the town council that they then don't agree with many many of the parts that we've included. So I I get that we don't feel like we're ready to do this now. Um, I would really want us, if we're going to, um, to, to look at it um, over one or two meetings, um, that we really confine our comments to, for example, the title, um, the, the, the aspects that the GOL would want to make sure it gets in to make sure that we talk about the expertise of members of the finance committee and so on, but not spend massive amounts of time on issues that we know that the town council is going to uh, also be spending time on. So that, that's the main thing is that this has the potential of taking up, you know, literally many, many GOL meetings and we don't want that to happen. We wanna get it back as quickly as possible. And so I would suggest that if we aren't going to get it back today, that we really try to condense our comments. I guess I just need to make this point. I'm sorry, Mandy, um, that if we can't come to an agreement amongst the five of us, if we send something back with a 5-0 vote, that will have real impact and it will actually mean we have resolved many of the issues that were addressed and, and, and talked about, honestly, many of the issues that are going to be talked about at the council. If we send something like this with a 3-2 vote, it's not going anywhere. So what's the point, right? You, I just don't understand. If we can't, as a group, the five of us with our different perspectives, fashion a policy that we can support five to zero, or maybe four to one and send it to the council. What good is it to send something half-baked three to two? It's just not going anywhere. And we'll use up, I mean, it just won't go anywhere. So do you want to accomplish something? Then let's do it here. If you don't want to accomplish something, let's just send this off now and it's just going to die. It'll die at the council. It'll get voted down. It won't get passed. I won't vote for it under any circumstances. And I, I'm sure I can find six other people at least. But if we send something that has been discussed and reviewed and we've come to some consensus and I can support, then I think you have a chance of getting it passed. But it can't happen like that. I'm sorry. Mandy. Thank you. Um, so, I want to respond to a couple of things to Pat or whatever. We have open meeting law issues and we have deliberation issues. It was already a concern that th two counselors plus a third put their opinion of what the policy should be, but most of those changes other than a couple were non-substantive. But to put George's policy up and then to put my redlined version of the one that went up before we've had a chance to discuss it is a clear violation of open meeting okay. law and deliberation requirements. This is why we have to discuss it in meetings. Um, 
And I don't agree with the counselors that have said um, that it was sent here to die. I don't agree with the counselors that say we shouldn't even discuss some of these sections. I have changes to every single section. Some of them are substantive, some of them are not. Um, it's hard to make a policy that relates to multiple committees and multiple appointment bodies and get the language um, consistent um, and understandable. Um, and that requires changes to things. Um, you know, it. And then there's the question of what is policy versus what is process. You can't take a process document and just change the word process to policy and say, oh, it's now a policy document. Um, a policy is we will interview every candidate. A process is how that interview happens. And we haven't even had that discussion as to which which are we doing? We were sent to come up with a policy. So I look at some of these sections of this form and I go, most of that's process, not policy. Most of it's process. And do we get rid of all of the process sections and only leave in the policy sections? That's a discussion we as a committee must have as to what process versus policy is and what we're going to deem process versus what we're going to deem policy. Everything that says the chair needs to do this is process. Everything that says the committee or that the council will do this is policy and then each committee could come up with who they're going to designate to do it. That would be more process. Um, you know, we haven't even had those discussions yet. Each committee that this came from, OCA and CRC and GOL adopted a process to get them through the whole process. A policy is different. And then there's the other thing of that I take offense at that um, the counselors have said, well, we're willing to maybe consider adopting some of the GOL changes that were made to the process so GOL could do interviews for resident things, but they never, re they never referenced the changes that CRC made as anywhere about being able to consider those changes. Three committees have gone through this, three committees have gone through the process and to just throw out any one committees and say that's not even worthy of consideration is also in my mind problematic um, completely. And to always, always reference just the planning board appointments instead of all the appointments is also getting so tiresome, I will say, as a, as a counselor. Um, it sounds, it seems as if when it's only the planning board appointments that are referenced, that there is a, a bullet, a bullseye on just those appointments and all the other ones just don't matter. Um, all the appointments the council makes matter and the process and the policy regarding those appointments for all of those multiple member bodies matter. And we should not just leave out some in implication that, well, they don't matter. Darcy. I'd actually like to um, hear from Kathy since she contributed um, and she's here. I think at this point, I mean, I, I just, my point is that GOL is struggling with what it wants to do. And Kathy's contribution at this point is about um, the larger document in front of us. Um, and I'm hoping that this document, this motion will be withdrawn so that we can actually get to the business of, of that, that is in front of us. Um, but if uh, you wish her to speak to this uh, motion, um, I do want to bring this to a close. We have some other business, believe it or not, that we have to take care of under new business. We also have public comment and we have minutes to approve and it is now 1224. Um, so uh, I would ask you to remove, to, to withdraw your motion so that we can make a decision about how we're going to proceed um, rather than to continue this debate at this point um, because I don't see it being fruitful at all. Um, we have some difficult issues uh, as a committee to resolve before we can begin to talk about any particular uh, document, um, including the one in front of us. 
I think that we said that if any of us had a question or wanted to get input from Kathy, we could do so. Do you have a question for Kathy? Yes, I just, what, want, okay. I just you want, I'm sorry. I just want to hear her input on the motion. That's not a question. Yeah, That's not a question, and she's not a member of this committee. Yeah, it doesn't. And it's this right. committee that votes on that motion. Right. I, I just at this point, the motion feels completely separate from any reason of having Kathy be right. responding. Um. Um. I. I am um, since. We doesn't. We don't appear to have a majority. I I will withdraw the motion. It, but that requires a second, right? I believe it does. The or second must be agreeable to. Seconded it. the motion to withdraw too. I'm sorry. It would require Sarah if she seconded it to withdraw to too. Yeah, right. Sarah, would you agree to withdrawing the motion? Yep. Yeah. And let me say as chair, um, and then uh, ask us to move on, that um, we, I will put, I'm not trying to bury this, but I, I think, I hope you understand that this is not as simple as some people are making it sound, that we just have to throw something up here, make a few quick changes, and voila, we have something we can send right back to the council so they can vote on it right away. Um, it's just, that's just not the case, okay? This isn't simple, it isn't easy. Um, that doesn't mean it can't be dealt with over the next two meetings. That was kind of my dream originally. Um, and that's why I put it on the agenda. So people talking about something being buried, they should read the damn agenda, all right? It's not first because in fact, we had a whole series of other important issues to deal with. Um, and so I will put this on the agenda next time. I will, this document is, will be obviously available again to the committee. I will submit my document for people to review and it will be on the agenda next time. Will it be the first or second item? I can't tell you right now because I don't know what else is coming down the pipe, but it will be given priority by the chair. Will it get to the council in the next two weeks? Well, obviously not. The next four weeks, I can't say. This isn't easy, okay? Um, if you wanna vote on something right away, we can do that and we can send it to the council and it will die there. Darcy. Uh, yeah, I was just going to urge us to um, try to get it done in the next two meetings. If I will we do everything in my it. power to do that. I promise you that. And that is why, in fact, I had prepared a document for this body, but it got superseded. Maybe I should have put it in anyway, but I decided, okay, we'll start with this document. We will have two documents to look at next time. I will give it priority. Um, I will do everything in my power to get it. I think realistically it's going to require at least one other GOL meeting, at least, but I will do what I can to move it forward. But I can't make promises because this is a complicated thing. Okay, good. Thank you, George. All right. Um, we have um, two sets of minutes. I would like your permission. I have reviewed them. I think they are fine. Uh, does anyone have any concerns about the minutes? Any problems, issues? Um, has everyone had a chance to at least look at them? Um, because I would like to move them uh, off our table. But um, if people have a reluctance, just raise your hand um, and I can postpone them one more meeting. Um, or if you have a change you wish to make, otherwise I will entertain a motion uh, to accept both sets of minutes. Um, these are minutes for April, March 31st and April 7th, 2021. Second. All right, I have a motion that's been made by the chair and seconded. I see no hands or faces with concerns or alarm. So I'm gonna move immediately to a vote and uh, start with Sarah. Aye. Thank you. Darcy. Yes. Pat. Aye. Mandy. Aye. The chair is a yes, so the vote is 5-0. Thank you very much to accept the minutes of March 31 and April 7th as presented. And as always, a thank you to our minute taker. Um, we have a item not anticipated. And this, we did get the uh, bylaws back. Um, Mandy had a chance to insert, make some changes. Um, we can try and deal with these now. I'd be willing to do that, but it is 1229. 
Um, so I'm I think we can do them fairly quickly if you let me share my screen and okay. put them up. All right, let me stop sharing mine, but let me just look to the rest of the committee. Can you bear another, I would say, 10 minutes maximum? We still do need to have public comment. Um, and we do have one attendee, which I believe, yes, we have uh, two attendees and someone has their hand up. So perhaps we should move to public comment now and then turn to, if you are willing, to turn to the new business. Okay? Yes. So let's, let's do public comment. I see uh, Pam Rooney has her hand raised. And so if we could bring her into the room and she may speak for three minutes. Um, Pam, thank, please thanks, go ahead. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. And I appreciate the, the care and thoughtfulness that uh, goes into creating policies and procedures. I understand um, it's a lot of work and I certainly appreciate it. Uh, I was chuckling as, as a former volunteer on a number of different committees across town. Um, I'm, I'm beginning to feel like being a volunteer is sort of responding to an RFP now, now or a request for qualifications like you treat a consultant. So it's getting very, um, although you want to be consistent, it still should be a friendly process because in fact, we are all volunteering as you are. So, um, um, you know, we, we want to keep it, uh, I, I think it's important to keep it consistent so that people who do want to volunteer understand from one board to another that there is in fact consistency across yep. that. Uh, one of the comments was made about um, all boards being important and they absolutely are. I think the difference between the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board that they in fact have permitting authority and that's very different than many committees on town which have recommendation authority. And so having a, a diversity of perspectives on, on a board such as those two at least um, is really important because we in fact have to have a public discourse about the impacts and consequences of things such as zoning and that affects our lives in, in, in great detail sometimes. So the public conversation and a diversity of opinion is very, very important in those conversations. Um, in terms of renewals, you, you talked about term limits or something, but, but um, perhaps you all as counselors are feeling that after a couple of years in, in the position, you're beginning to feel more confident uh, a little more self-assuredness in speaking out and expressing yourselves. And I, and I believe that the same goes for board appointments where someone has gained some experience and understanding of the processes. It's important in, unless they've done something egregious to continue those, those appointments. They are volunteering and, and um, contributing as they are able. Um, so, and, and if in fact you are having to table this conversation today, uh, perhaps you might re make a rec recommendation to whomever decides this, and I'm a little confused at who actually now gets to decide this, um, perhaps this, uh, the board reappointments could be, could be postponed until you settle this kind of thing. I'm thinking of two, two seats on the planning board who are up this year, and both of them are doing a great job. Does it hurt to extend that, their terms uh, until this gets decided? So thanks very much for your time and thanks for letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councilor Shane has her hand up. So if we could bring her into the room and let her speak. Am I unmuted? You're fine. Yes. Okay. Um, I just want to echo what Pam said, and she said it far better than I could. Um, and just in terms of moving things out, I was actually caught by surprise at the Monday night discussion because I had listened to the discussion in GOL and saw a, po a process be worked out, and clearly not a full blown policy that came out with a four to one vote and had sentences being added to it. 
So I, I thought you'd done a good job about airing. And then to have the reception to be, this is just a piece of a broader policy. We can't just think about this one thing was a surprise to me. I was really caught by surprise. Um, so I'm hoping that within two meetings worth, um, whatever is considered to be policy versus process um, could be ironed out. And I think the importance of uniformity and consistency, um, not just from committee to committee, but over time, so that if we get a different group of four people on a committee, that suddenly it's not an, a new set of anything. You know, if, if GOL changed, then you would do the finance appointments differently in some way, but it just, it lends a consistency. So, um, and I really, I would second Pam's uh, idea of if these things need to be worked out, one way of um, buying some time would be to extend the appointments that we currently have. So we don't have to face either divergent or inconsistent or what are we doing kinds of questions. We could just allow you to hammer out some ideas. So I'll, I'll just leave it with that. I thought that was a creative way to say, um, it's not like the world falls apart tomorrow. The way we were all thinking the decision on Chauvin was which way it went would really matter and it did. So I, I don't think it's that kind of decision here, but just getting some time um, if possible would be terrific. Thank you. I see no other members of the public present with their hands up, in fact. Um, so that is the end of public comment. Um, so let us go back, if you are willing, colleagues, to uh, see if we can move these two bylaws along. And uh, Mandy, you have the screen. My computer went crazy. So you can see stormwater management now on the screen, right? Good. good. I'm going to go through exactly what the changes are based on the, the attorney opinion on this. I added the C section G for non-monetary penalties. That is no substantive change other than that's a tradition we do in the bylaws now that we forgot to do at our first GOL review. And Manny, I'm right away I'm ask you a quick question, very stupid question. Why is enforcement in parentheses? I have no idea. That's Can just... we just remove the parentheses? I don't sure. understand that. I mean, it's just. Uh, Here we go. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Removed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then the only other changes in stormwater, I'm paging down because it takes a while to get to them, is anywhere the superintendent of public works was referenced that did not have or designee after it. I added the phrase or their designee. Could we look at each one briefly? Do you yep. mind? I'm so sorry. So this is the All first right. one right. in applicability. Um, because some of these are. Um... So this one is may also require a permit subject to the discretion of the superintendent of public works or their designee. So it doesn't just have to be Guilford. All right. Okay. I, that's that one. I mean, I, some of these, I think, yeah, okay. Um, right. The next one is emergency activity. This is an exception, I think, in the ex exemption right. section. Right. Any emergency activity that throws us as determined by the superintendent Fine. of public works or their designee. Their designee. Fine. Okay. Do we uh, really need to go through each one if that's the only change? Well, George I has think, to see each one. I, I did, and, and my concern is in some cases that perhaps this is just over overreaching here, over overdoing it, but um, that in a lot of cases, I'm not sure it's even needed. Um, yeah, that needed to be changed in your document. Thank you. Hold on, I need to make sure. Yeah, it, it, right there or right. Yeah, I caught that. Put okay. it in the wrong section. All right. So, super stormwater management permits. Yeah. yeah right. Superintendent or designee have authority. Action: Superintendent or designee may take the following actions: appeal, okay. decision by the superintendent or designee, waivers, superintendent or designee waive. 
Yeah, I think that the main issue was enforcement. Um, and here's and, the enforcement yeah, superintendent right, or yeah. designee, superintendent or designee. Right, and this this allows the police, I take it, to be used as an enforcement agent. Is that correct? Okay. Is that basically the police, um, which was already up top, but it also, you know, at in one of these, it was um, um, enter property. Right. If you didn't have the or designee, it would have to be Guilford and only Guilford to enter the property. Right. Now, no, he, there, there it made sense. It made sense. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. could say Amy can or someone else can. Right. Exactly. Right. Okay. So those are the only changes to stormwater. I don't okay. know whether we want to vote to recommend or, you know, I don't know what the vote Re would be. We, I guess we would vote to recommend as amended uh, to, to declare clear, consistent, and actionable um, this, um, the storm, this is the stormwater bylaw. Yes. Um, as amended by GOL on April 21st, 2021, would be the motion. The Second. Candidate. I'm making and Pat is seconded. And I'm going to go immediately to a vote unless I see hands raised. Um, start with Mandy. Aye. And Pat. Aye. Sarah. Aye. Thank you, Darcy. Yes. And the chair is a yes. So it's 5-0 to accept those changes, those amendments to the uh, stormwater Storm bylaw. So this is the IDDE bylaw. Again, Again just the non-criminal here. I'll, I'll get rid of the parentheses I for George. I don't understand. Maybe there's a reason. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> um, and then K, okay. and it was that one phrase in the data block. And then it's just, I think in this one, it's nearly only in the exemptions section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. How come the exempt? Oh, the, not the exemptions in suspension. And so comply with an emergency suspension. The superintendent or designee may take the step. Superintendent will or designee will issue the written order in the yeah. in that section. And then the enforcement is the same, adding or their right. designee. This again allows right. for okay. the same reasons. All right. And there were a lot more in yes. this one yes. for there's a lot more enforcement. Yeah. And appeals. Okay. Yep. All right. And this was reviewed by attorney and uh, gave his approval to these sorts of changes. So again, I would entertain a motion to declare um, this version of the IDDE bylaw as amended on April 21, 20, uh, 2021 to be clear, consistent, and actionable. Second. And thank you. A second from Mandy. Again, I'm going to go immediately to a vote. Darcy. Yes. Sarah. Aye. Uh, Pat. Aye. And Mandy. Aye. And the chair is an aye. So again, 5-0 um, to accept this, declare this as clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. All right, future agenda items. Um, the chair has agreed and committed to putting agenda item number six um, at the top or near the top of the agenda next time, preferably at the top. Um, however, we do have a problem. We have the DAB process that clearly needs our attention. So there's gonna be some challenge there. Um, I probably will put DAB first um, but, um, and put number six second, um, but it will be at or near the top. Um, the, uh, we've asked everyone to give some thought to that process, particularly around the issue of interviews, um, SOIs, et cetera. I think there were three things in particular that we asked people to give some thought to um, and come prepared to argue for um, with the understanding that our goal is to send a recommended uh, process um, to the council. The council will then decide what to do about that and to whom to give it, though it most likely will be us. So those are the two items I have. Anything else that people have in mind for next time? I'm not aware of any pressing um, uh, proclamations, resolutions, bylaws. I'm not aware of any. You have agreed to let me and Mandy look at the uh, Asian Heritage Proclamation, and we will do that and, and get that to Lynn. And you've asked me to reach out to Lynn um, and talk about proclamations and how we treat them. Anything I'm missing? All right. 
Right. Thank you all. Uh, sorry we went over time. It was longer than we would have liked, but um, go well. I'll see you all soon. Thank you, George. All right. And thank Bye -bye. you, Emily. Yeah, Emily, thank you. Thank you, Athena. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.